Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Data Pioneer from uh, the Linux Unix Tech Channel. And today I thought we would uh, take a look at Zorin OS 15 core. Uh, it is the uh, core version because the core version is free. Uh, the premium or professional version, uh, if you will, of Zorin OS is uh, $39. Uh, they're charging for it. Uh, so we're going to look at uh, core version 15 of Zorin OS. Um, because it is free and we can download it for free and uh, we'll get into it and take a look at it if you want to come along with me. Um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and subscribe please and uh, hit that bell when you do so all my future uploads, you'll get notified immediately about those. And uh, if you like the video that you're about to see, go ahead and hit that uh, up thumbs up and uh, like my video. It really helps me promote the channel. And so let's get into it. Let's look at Zorin OS 15 Core OS. Take a look at it. Okay, before we get out to the setup and installation of Zorin OS 15 Core, I thought I would take us out to distrowatch.com and take a look at the, the statistics on the distribution itself that we're going to be looking at here. Um, if you are a newbie to Linux and you're not familiar with distrowatch.com, if you go to the secure site, distrowatch.com, here it is, uh, and it is a great site because it keeps you up to date with the latest distributions of Linux, and um, Zorin OS is near the bottom of the list, so I'm going to go ahead um, and take a look at that by selecting the distribution from the pull-down menu, and so let's go ahead and look at it. Here it is, Zorin, so I'm going to select it. And it takes us out to a screenshot here of Zorin OS, and it tells us some information about Zorin. So let me just go ahead and go over that. Uh, of course, it is uh, Linux, and uh, it's based on Debian and Ubuntu uh, long-term uh, service, LTS. What that means is, is that it's supported for at least five years, um, and it is a long-term service distribution, which means also that it will be an extremely stable distribution and fully supported. Its origin is Ireland um, and the architecture is uh, i386 and x8664. I'm using the 64-bit version. Uh, it has the GNOME and the XFCE desktop. Uh, we're going to be looking at the Zorin OS 15 core which I believe has the XFCE desktop. Now what's the difference between the two? Well, from a, a layman standpoint, no, GNOME is very memory uh, heavy, whereas XFCE is memory light, and so this should be a little more responsive, unless you're using a lot of memory. Now, if you've got a lot of memory in your system, and I have uh, allocated four gigs of RAM to this OS, or will be, um, in, uh, in the video today, and so, you know, this is going to make a difference, because if I'm running the GNOME desktop, uh, it's not going to be quite as robust, not quite as responsive as the XFCE, which is going to be very light and very responsive, hopefully. Um, the category of this distro is its beginner's distro. It is a desktop distribution, and it is uh, a, a live version is available, okay? And then it is active, and according to DistroWatch, um, it says that it is number nine on the list. Now, you can't always trust that. That doesn't mean it's the ninth most popular distro out there in the world. It just means that from the distrowatch.com standpoint, it's number nine on the list. Down below here, you've got links to things like uh, the home page, which is where I downloaded uh, Zorin uh, 15 core OS. Um, but you do have some user forms available here, and then there are some screenshots here. And then there's some download mirrors. There's one download mirror here uh, that you can go to to download uh, Zorin as well. Download mirrors are pretty important sometimes because sometimes the home page is uh, getting a lot of downloads, and so the mirrors will come in handy from time to time. All right, so now that we've looked at DistroWatch, and just you know, go ahead and I'll put a link out here for DistroWatch down below the video as well, as well as the home page for Zorin. Uh, in case you don't remember, but you can bookmark it uh, and you'll have it for uh, future use. So let's get into the setup now of Zorin OS 15 Core. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, I'm in my virtual machine 6.0 manager. I'm going to go ahead and set up the Zorin OS. So I'm going to click the machine new. I'm going to give this a name. I'm going to call it Zorin OS 15 core and 64-bit. Uh, and let's go ahead and it's going to be based on Ubuntu 64-bit. So let me find that in here in the list. Uh, there it is. And we're going to give this thing our standard 4 gigabytes or 4096 megabytes of RAM. Uh, creating a VDI. So let's hit the Create button here. And we're going to give this thing a total of 50 gigabytes of VDI space dynamically allocated. And let's uh, click the Create button. All right, so let's hit the settings here and get in. We don't need to do anything under General. Uh, under system, let's untick the floppy and select hard drive and move it up so that we reboot, it goes to the hard drive. All right, let's hit display and let's give this thing 128 uh, megabytes of uh, memory for the display. I'm going to select the VGA uh, for the VBox and 3D acceleration. For storage, I'm going to hit that uh, optical drive there and choose the ISO I downloaded from Zorin's website, which is the Zorin OS 15 core, 64-bit. Uh, let's click the audio, and uh, we do want audio rendered here. Network, I'm going to select adapter and make that bridged, so it's on the same network. For USB, I'm going to select 3.0 and click OK. And let's go ahead and launch Zorin OS. And I'm going to do the view as I normally do here and select uh, full screen. And uh, You can do several options here. You can try and install or install. You can do the install Zorin um, in different aspects here. I'm going to go ahead and just do the install Zorin OS. All right, so it's uh, booting up now, and it should uh, boot us up to the uh, installer. All right, uh, so we are getting to the installer now, and so we can select Try Zoran OS or Install Zoran OS since it was Install or Try. So let's click the install. I'm going to go ahead and just install it. And here we are, keyboard layout, English standard keyboard layout. Let's continue. Uh, updates and other software. Yeah, I want to tick both of those. I want to download and also install third-party software into Zorin. Let's co click continue now. And in a few seconds, uh, we should get on, move on to the next phase. All right, so the installation type, we're going to say erase the entire disk. I'm not going to encrypt or use LVM or something else. So let's go with install now. And I'm going to click continue. This is our warning screen here. It's going to write the changes to the disk. Click continue and... Um, we should be off and running here on the install. Uh, oh, no, yeah, that's right. I forgot it's going to set up our, our time zones. Let's do that. Um, yeah, we need to give it a name here, so my name. And the computer name, I'm going to call it Zorin uh, OS 15 uh, dash uh, VM. And uh, put in a password, username for Data Pioneer, and then the password. And then once we get that in, go ahead and click Continue. And uh, it's off. So it's copying the files now. Uh, this process is going to take quite a while to complete. It, uh, on average, takes about 10 minutes plus. Um, so it's going to be copying files, doing other things. Then it'll be begin its installation process. I don't want you to have to sit through this entire process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop uh, 
the video at this point and come back when it is completed. Okay, I'm back. Uh, just configured the bootloader and it's running the Grub install right now and doing some other things. So we're almost completed uh, with the uh, setup and installation phase of Zorin OS 15 core. Uh, and then we'll uh, reboot the system and uh, give it a, a give it a look. Uh, so it's, it's uh, like I said, it's about to wrap up now and uh, complete its install process. It, this does take a long time. Um, not too long, but I mean it took about 15 minutes total so far to get to this point. And um, so it is a little bit uh, lengthy when compared to other distros that I've installed, including the one uh, spin I just did. If you haven't looked at that video, please take a look at it. It's a spin of uh, Linux Mint 19.2 that I just completed, which was Dark Vader 1909 uh, OS. So take a look at that. All right, so it's running the uh, D package now, and uh, like I said, it's just about completed. All right, so it's removing files now that it doesn't need, and um, that's normal. It has already installed the external three third-party packages that uh, I told it to go ahead and install. Uh, so it's uh, once again running the D package. Zorin uh, OS 15 core is uh, supposed to be a very nice OS. I'm looking forward to getting into it with you and showing you what's available. Um, the last time I used Zorin, I think, was probably version 10 or maybe even earlier. So it's been a while since I have looked at Zorin. Um, and so I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Hope you are too, and we'll get into it here shortly and uh, look at it together. All right, so Linux modules are being prepared now and uh, some extra things for the AMD 64 processor, 64-bit. Since I did download the 64-bit version of Zorin OS 15 core, And so it's preparing the Linux headers now. Uh, so we're we're getting ready to wrap this up, I believe. And at some point, I'll take you out to the distro watch, and we'll take a look at the distro itself uh, from the perspective of distro watch uh, to show you its origin. Uh, what it is a variant of, that kind of stuff. So we'll get into that here shortly and take a look at it. All right, so it's uh, configuring the user data and uh, doing its final wrap-up phase here, I think. No, I said that a couple of times, didn't I? <laughs> so, uh, But I'm, I'm confident that we're getting ready to get to the end of this. Um, at least you didn't have to sit through the uh, 12 to 15 minutes of uh, uh, stuff that goes on with an install. We've all seen an install before, so there's no reason to sit through the whole thing. Uh, that doesn't really do anything for the viewer. Um, all, what you want to see is how you get there and quickly and, and then get into the OS itself and take a look at it. That's the review part of it. All right, so it's doing some things with the image. It's restoring the previously installed packages. And um, shouldn't be much longer. All right, so we are done. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's uh, click that Restart Now button. And let's reboot the system here. That's nice. Nice little uh, boot screen there. I uh, love VirtualBox 6.0 Manager, by the way. If you haven't tried VirtualBox 6.0, it ain't 5.x, okay? So you'll, you'll love it. 6.0 has got some good enhancements. I actually prefer it over VMware. All 
right, so it's going through the boot process right now and uh, should take us to the login screen. We get into the login screen. I'll go ahead and log us in, and then we will uh, take a look at it. There we are. So let's go ahead and click the button there and put in my password to get logged in. And let's click on that sign in button. And uh, we shall log in. I hope, hopefully, it'll come up to the 1920 by 1080 uh, HD uh, resolution screen for my widescreen monitor without having to do anything. That's what I'm hoping, anyway. We'll have to install VirtualBox guest editions or Linux editions. Um, and I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that I select the VBOX, VGA display configuration before we get started and is the setup phase. Yeah, it's coming up to full screen, and here we are. This is Zorin OS 15 core. Okay, so let's take a look at Zorin OS 15 uh, core, and I'm going to go ahead and click on the menu. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty nice menu here. Um, You've got, uh, of course, my account over here on the right, and then let's go over to the left. We've got accessories. If I click on accessories, we've got calculator, clocks, files, maps, text editor, to-do, and weather. That's nice. Let's go back and uh, look at uh, what we have here. If you're a gamer, you've got uh, Isle Riot um, Soft, or uh, Solitaire, rather, uh, we've got Mahjong, we've got Mines, we've got uh, uh, Quadrapacel and uh, Sudoku. Um, so, you know, that's five nice games you've got there. If you're a gamer, I'm, you can add pretty, you know, pretty much what you want here, I'm sure. We'll take a look at that when we get into the software manager. Um, under graphics, we have the document viewer, the uh, GNU image manipulation program, which is GIMP. Uh, we'll take a look. Let's look at the version we have. Uh, on this. It should be version 10, I would think. I mean 2.10, rather. So 2.10, not 2.08, um, which is what we normally have. And let's go to full screen, and it's already coming up to the uh, presentation that I like for GIMP. All right, so very good. Let's go ahead and close that. Uh, let's get back into uh, graphics, and we have the Libra Office Draw and Shotwell and Simple Scan. Uh, they're available out of the box here in Zorin OS 15 Core. If we go back now, let's look at Internet. We've got uh, Firefox Web Browser. Let's take a look at the version. So far, I like this uh, very responsive operating system, even with just four gigs of RAM. So far, it's been pretty pretty nice. Uh, I can't complain. Um, so let's uh, see what we have here. Let me bring it up to full screen. And let's go over to the pancake and come down to help and about Firefox. And we have 67.0.3. That is not the latest version. The latest version, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, is 69.0. But that's okay. I mean, it's pretty far up there. Um, and uh, it's a 64-bit version. Uh, so you've got quite a bit here uh, to go with. Very responsive, it looks like. Let me go ahead and close this and uh, close the tabs here on that. Let's get back in here. Uh, I believe that was all was available under... No, we've got uh, Romina uh, as well. Never used Romina. Um, Office, let's see what we have for Office. We've got Calendar, Contacts, Document Viewer, Evolution Mail, you got the full LibreOffice suite. Now, I'm not a big fan of LibreOffice, so I would install FreeOffice or uh, WPS Office or something like that in here. I'd probably keep LibreOffice Libre uh, available, but I would just install my own. Let's go back. And under Sound and Video, we've got Cheese, uh, Pivetti, Rhythmbox, and the Video Player. Uh, go back here under System Tools. We have Disks, Input Method, Main Menu, Power Statistics, Settings. Let's look at Settings and see what we have here. This is based on Ubuntu and Debian Linux. Um, we've got Wi-Fi setup. We've got Bluetooth. I'm running uh, 
hardwired uh, in a VM, so it's Wi-Fi is nothing. Appearance here, uh, we've got a couple of backgrounds. We've got background and lock screen. For notifications here, we've got a full gamut of notification pop-ups turning it on and off, lock screen notifications on or off. Archive manager is on, backups is on, banner designer, um, Brazero clocks, desktop sharing, evolution mail and files. We've got a search functionality here uh, within each of these applications. Uh, region and language, we have United States English and United States English for formats. We can change that, obviously, if we would like. For input sources, I've got English US, of course. And then we can manage the install languages by clicking this button here. For uh, universal access here, you can see that we can turn on and off the Always Show Universal Access menu. I do not have it on currently. Uh, we can also uh, you know, turn on and off the things that you see, like high contrast, large text, that kind of thing. For visually and hearing impaired, you've got other things here for hearing impaired. Visual alerts um, for typing, you've got screen, board, uh, screen keyboard that you can turn on or off, repeat keys and cursor blinking, that kind of thing. For online accounts, you've got a full gamut, Google, Nextcloud, uh, Facebook, Microsoft, Flickr, Pocket, Foursquare, Microsoft Exchange. Under privacy, you've got lock screen that you can turn on or off, location services, usage and history, Purge trash and temporary files, connectivity, and then you've got a firewall configuration that you can change here as well. Under sharing, um, right now the computer is a VM, so there is no nothing being shared with it. For sound, uh, I can increase the volume, decrease the volume uh, on the desktop itself. Uh, for over amplification, I can turn this on or off. Um, right now, I'm using the analog output amplifier built in for audio, for power. Uh, I can blank the screen after five minutes. I'm going to change that to never. Um, and then suspend and power button is automatic suspend. I've got that turned off by default out of the box. For network, uh, gigabit network here, VPN is not set up. For devices, I've got uh, VBX here. And uh, Displays, keyboard, mouse. Okay, for displays, um, scale right now is a 100%. I can change it to 200. The resolution is 1920 by 1080 or 16 by 9, which is what I want. And um, you can do keyboard setup here, mouse and touchpad. I don't have a touchpad. Printers, it looks like it found my printer by default, which is great, uh, which is an HP DeskJet 2600 series all-in-one printer. So it's a printer, copier, scanner. Uh, removable media, here you can ask what to do if you put a CD in or a DVD, if you turn on the music player, select photos or software. Thunderbolt here, support as well. Wacom tablet, support, uh, which is common in a lot of the Linux distros nowadays. And then color as well, VBox monitor and DeskJet 2600 series printer, all right. On the right-hand side, we've got uh, the, uh, looks like the network interface. We've got sound and power, so I can uh, wire connected here. I can select here, and I can go over. I can also uh, cancel, restart, or power off. So okay, I wanted to wrap up this video by showing you a couple of things I didn't show you earlier. I'm going to go ahead and log back in, and let me get put in the password. And let's log back into the system. And um, also wanted to do this to get a fresh uh, reboot so I can look at HTOP. OK, so we're back in now. And so let's go ahead and open up the terminal. And let me run HTOP. I had to install HTOP. And you can see we're a little over a gig of memory, 1,015 megs out of four gigs. Um, so that's a little heavier than I thought it was going to be. We've got 129 tasks, 265 threads, one task running. 
Uh, load averages look pretty good, 0 0.47, 0.30, and 0.11. Um, so it's a little bit heavier than I thought it was going to be. Let me go ahead and close this. And um, let's go change the background here on the, um, the Zorin OS. Uh, let's right-click and change background. All right, so I'm going to click background here. And um, we got a couple of things we can choose from. Look pretty good. Um, let's go down. Kind of like this one, so I'm going to change it to that. Select it. All right, so there we are. Uh, so now if we right-click and open the terminal again, I've got translucency going here, as you can see. I really like the way this looks. Um, let's see what kernel version we're running. Running 5.0.0-27-generic. Not bad. Okay, let's close that and... Let's click the Software Center. I didn't show you that uh, previously. Here are the editor's picks for uh, applications. Got quite a few to pick from. Uh, audio and video, we've got several to pick from there. Let it come up. All right, so you got a ton, a ton of uh, applications you can pick from here. And uh, you got games, communication and news, graphics and photography, productivity and add-ons. So you've got a lot of things to choose from. Let's go ahead and close that. And let's get the uh, file manager and open that up. So this is the file manager here. And um, not quite sure what file manager this is. Um, looks like Thunar, so I'm thinking it's Thunar. Okay, all right, so I just wanted to bring it back up and show you that. Uh, let me go ahead and power it back down again. And this has been a review of uh, Zorin OS 15 uh, Core. And I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, have a nice day.